I was supposed to live up to that. Um, <laughs> I love the shirt. Uh, nice. Just wait. New shirt. Um, so listen to listen to Thomas. Apparently, we're in some pretty pretty deep trouble. Um, uh, my role here is to talk about where we are. Um, so who is we? Uh, each of us are individuals. Um, we're all here as part of this march. We're all here as part of this movement to try and keep humanity alive and thriving into the future. And we're all here as, as part of humanity, as, as our species, and as all of us, part of this world-spanning civilization that we're in, that is, uh, you know, part of the, part of the problem is, is typically how we see it. Um, so, I, I, I said we need to know who, who is we, but maybe that doesn't matter so much because my answer is pretty much the same for all of them. We're dying. It looks a little different for each of them, but that, that, that's how I'm seeing it. And, and it, I mean it in different ways. It, it, as individuals, we're all dying just as any living thing dies. It's part of the cycle of life. You live, you die, and so the moment you're alive, you're in the process of dying. Time is slipping away. Um, and we often recognize that we need to be better at coming to peace with death. Some ridiculous proportion of our healthcare costs get spent on extending the last few months of life as if the quantity is what matters and the quality is irrelevant. But we can change that attitude that, that we have, that fear, right? One way to do that is through silence. We can come to appreciate the quality. I think a lot of us have experienced that on the march. Or meditation. Some people think meditation is about learning to not care. Oh, I don't, won't care if I die, or I won't care if other people are suffering. I don't think that's what it's about. Um, I think it's about caring, but remaining open to what is really happening, and not closed. Open like, um, I haven't done a lot of martial arts, but I did a little bit of Aikido, and I really wanted to learn how to roll. And, you know, the impulse when you're going to fall is, a lot of us, I know I have at least, is to go like this. I'm going to protect myself. And then you break bones and things. But what you learn to do is open up and make a circle, and then you have a kind of strength and you, you roll, and you don't get hurt. Um, we can also die in each moment that we really believe we are separate from one another. Especially when we think we're better or worse than other people. Um, and a point on that I want to make is, even when we think we're better because they're thinking they're better. <laughs> we fall into think, oh, I'm above that. They think they're better, but I'm better than that. Oh, wait. <laughs> I'm going to come back to that. <laughs> As a species, or as a civilization, uh, obviously we're at risk. That's, that's what we're here about. We're, we're endangered. Um, and as a civilization, to, to my way of thinking at least, it's not just the West, but it's domination culture generally. Pretty much all the cultures we've heard of in the world got, they're big enough that we know about them because they have a history of conquering. And, and they're a part of domination culture. They're a part of thinking their way is better than others. They're going to take over. Um, and that way of thinking is a form of, of theft. And the evidence is increasing that many cultures in the past have wiped out their local natural uh, uh, resources and, and gone ex themselves extinct on a small scale that way. Um, and so clearly that attitude cannot be sustained it's not a moral judgment, it's just <coughs> physics. It doesn't work to keep stealing and not giving back. So even if we somehow came up with some magic bullet to survive the climate crisis, we're going to keep creating existential crises for ourselves uh, if we don't change that domination attitude. Yeah. <laughs> 
Now, as a group, as a march, we, we are dying. We're in the middle of the ending process right now, right? Um, and many of us are wondering, will we be reincarnated? <laughs> will we come back together as one big group? Or as many different groups? Maybe some overlap? Um, all of these are okay. Um, and it's not just a matter of seeing which of these will, will happen, but of doing something to make them happen. I couldn't find the person who wrote this quote, but they, somebody said, the best way to predict the future is to create it. <laughs> yeah. Woo, yeah. So think about what you want to be reincarnated as, and try to help make it happen. <laughs> now as a movement, actually, I don't know if I can really say that the movement is dying. It's kind of the hardest one to see of these. Um, but from my perspective, at least, this isn't really about dying, but it's, it seems like it's failing so far. A lot of things are still moving in the wrong direction. And some of the things that are moving in the right direction aren't moving anywhere near fast enough uh, uh, from what we're understanding. On the other hand, there, really, there actually are signs of life in the movement. I mean, a great many of us here have participated in the, at the, the People's Climate March in New York. And it brought an incredible wide diversity of people together and groups. And there was a lot of life there in that and a lot of excitement in it. Um, on the other, other hand, uh, uh, people are busy putting it down, putting different pieces of the movement down. So some people put down the People's Climate March as the last gasp of liberalism. Uh, and then other people put down the people who put down the march, ridiculing their call to tear down the structures that are killing us. And this is just, you know, the inability to connect and come together within the movement. We're all, we're all nominally on the same page, wanting some of the same things. So where are we? We're in the middle of the greatest opportunity we may ever have to fully put into play a marvelous truth that we are not really separate from one another. From one another. From the rest of the natural world, that's the obvious thing about the climate crisis, but also from each other as human beings. I'll bring back the quote that, that Jimmy brought from the girl who spoke at the rally in Phoenix. She said, belongingness is the silver lining of the climate crisis. If we are going to survive this, or again, even if there's a magic bullet and we survive, if we're going to survive the continuing crises that will come up, from our illusions of separation and domination, it will have to be because we find that belongingness. We find a way to make that belongingness part of how we see the world, part of how we live, part of the systems and structures of how our society works. So on the one hand, as I've said so far, we are dying. Some of it's natural, some of it doesn't seem as natural, we may not like it, but it's all happening. Everything dies eventually. The whole species will die eventually. That's fine. I, I came to accept that at one point. Um, but I want us to last as long as possible. Because I think we're really interesting, and, and I want to see what else is going to happen. Um, but dying is, is, is an ultimate separation and if, as I just said, if we're, if we're not separate, that, what that means is we cannot die. Whether or not the marchers stay together as one group or several, or none of us ever see another marcher ever again the rest of our lives, we were together here. that we made all across this continent for the last eight months. And nothing can ever undo that. <laughs> we were here. Whenever any one individual dies, we mourn that they are gone. But no one and nothing can ever stop them from having been here. They are forever a part of the world, a part of the universe. They were here. 
If we die as a species, all of the wonderful music and love we've created, all of the beauty will still have been here. And all of the incredible variety of languages and cultures that have ever existed that have created all of those things, more than any of us can possibly comprehend. More beyond that than you can comprehend. <laughs> Nothing that the universe does to try to erase that can ever succeed. <laughs> they used to think that black holes eliminated all information. When they realized that matter could get back out, they were like, okay, okay, matter can get back out, but at least information can't get back out. Well, now they're starting to be like, okay, no, it looks like maybe some information can get out too. <laughs> we were here. If the domination civilization dies, Now I'm going to bring back the thing I said I would bring back earlier. It would be separation to, to think of it, at, to, to just say good riddance, to just curse it. Ah, that domination civilization as just some evil that we will have overthrown and gotten rid of. To deny the admittedly flawed domination civilization is to deny a part of ourselves. It has brought good along with the bad. It has brought the audacity to think that we could understand things that seem unknowable. And thus it has brought us the ability to vaccinate ourselves against terrible diseases. The power to connect with people on the other side of the planet without taking the energy to actually go there. The ability to stand on the surface of another world. These are wonders. In the same way that we know that families raised out of poverty by coal incomes will accept the retirement of fossil fuels far greater, far more easily than they will accept a war on coal, which is how some people are trying to characterize it, we must retire domination and separation culture. The nice bits of it can come back into you know, work once in a while. Uh, and, and we want to do our best to appreciate and preserve the nuggets in it that are positive and figure out how they can fit into a world of belonging and partnership and power with. Woo! Yeah. Now, accepting the role that death, that separation, that domination have in this crazy universe frees us. Because on the one hand, nothing we do can avoid a certain amount of that death, of that separation, that domination. So if you can't avoid it, don't worry about it. And at the same time, when we're able to accept that those things are going to happen to some degree, to, to whatever degree they are going to happen, if we can look at them and say, that is there, I can't change that part of it or that way it manifests, then we become more powerful to protect and extend and make more wonderful the connection, the belongingness, and all of that that we want more of. So where are we? We are at a crux, a crucial point in our multiple lives. We are in a place where accepting, embracing that we are in danger, and a place where, if we are willing to live life on the edge, it is crucially important to have the right questions about what we are going to do next. As a species or civilization, what will tip us into there being enough people and enough systems that are working as part of the rest of nature, as part of each other? As a movement, what will enable us to form strong communities of people we really get along with who can work and play and love together well? And to then form coalitions with other such communities that are different enough that we can form a powerful enough coalition, that powerful enough together to make the kinds of changes that we need to make. Because as someone told us somewhere along the way, 
If you don't have strong disagreements with the other groups in your coalition, your coalition isn't big enough. <laughs> As individuals. 